Hey there, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. Imagine trying to take a breath and just not being able to pull the air you need into your lungs. It's a terrifying thought, and it's also a real worry for 300 million people around the world with asthma. So here's a question. If you have the condition, is there a chance it might lessen with time or, or even go away? I'm going to explore that topic today with pulmonologist Neha Solanke. She is one of the many trusted experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to talk about our health. Now let's take a look at asthma and whether there's anything you can do to loosen its grip on your breathing. Welcome back to the podcast, Dr. Solenke. Uh, thanks for gifting us with uh, some of your time again. Yes, thank you so much for having me. So in researching for today's uh, topic ahead of our chat, I was just absolutely blown away by the number of people. Um, it was 300 million uh, who are dealing with asthma around the world. Um, I, I get the sense that asthma is a much bigger issue than most of us suspect. Yes, it is. And so many people have it worldwide. We have so much asthma here in Ohio, even. Um, it affects children. It affects young adults into our aging population. So it is definitely something that we see all the time that affects uh, the ER, affects primary care, affects pulmonary care. A lot of people have it, and it is a bit of a burden on our healthcare system. Well, and, and that's why we're talking about what we what we're looking at today, which is what you can do to to maybe kind of minimize asthma, or, or even if it's possible uh, to to outgrow it. So um, I guess. When it comes to that, like whether you can just kind of get past it, um, th does that happen or is it a little more complex than just a yes or no sort of answer? Yes. I wish I wish I could tell you, yes, it goes away when you turn X number of years of age. But, but that's just that's not the case. Um, asthma is a disease of chronic inflammation in the airways. And a lot of times it's driven by allergies. It can be driven by other things such as pollution, but the main driving force for most asthma is allergen exposure. If you continue having exposure to that allergen and you have a diagnosis of asthma, you will likely continue to have asthma. Now, we are talking now about asthma remission. And that is where people do go through what we call remission. So they um, stop experiencing the symptoms of asthma. They don't have to use their inhalers as often. And this doesn't happen in everybody, but there are a select group of people that do experience this as they grow older. On the other hand, we have people who, as they get older, develop asthma. So it's something that we're looking into, something that is being actively researched, but it is not a one-size-fits-all. So it sounds like the whole remission uh, concept with it, um, that, that's something that we're, we're still learning a lot about. Because I, I always thought, I, I remember seeing that, that, that kids, a lot of kids will kind of outgrow it. And, and I don't know if that's the right phrase or, or not, but it just, it seems to lessen. Is that, does that happen frequently with kids or is it something that it's, it's kind of hit or miss? We do see that a lot with uh, the pediatric population. I do specifically adult asthma, but obviously all adults were kids at some point. And so, you know, they'll come yeah. in and they'll <laughs> say, I was right. They'll say, um, I, I had really bad asthma as a child, and then I grew out of it for many years, and then it came back. So some people do grow out of it to grow right back into it, and then some people grow out of it and never experience these symptoms again. The question becomes, did they truly have asthma as a child? Did they have some sort of bronchitis? Um, so... It's up for debate whether they ever fully outgrow asthma. It is something that can come and go 
over time. And that's one of the big things uh, it seems like you, you see where even if, if you think that you're, you're kind of past it a little bit, it, it sounds like you're, you're always at risk of it, of it returning. Maybe, you know, something will, will set it off or, or you have a, a certain trigger that will just kind of kickstart it up again. Yes. So the people with asthma that they don't actively deal with their asthma every day. They have certain triggers. So cold weather is their trigger or perfume is their trigger. And once they get those trigger, once they're, um, once they experience those triggers, they have an asthma exacerbation and that can be unpredictable. That can lead to an urgent care visit, a visit to the doctor, or even sometimes a visit to the emergency department. So even with somebody who has a mild form of asthma, the right trigger could still cause them to get very sick. And does that just happen like out of the blue or is there kind of like a, a slow ramp up? So generally uh, it can happen out of the, it can happen either way. Most people, if your trigger is perfume, you're going to start feeling that right away. If your trigger is cold, you'll feel that right away. With things such as allergies, such as cat dander, for instance, um, that can sometimes be, that person's asthma may need persistent exposure to the dander to develop that exacerbation. However, another person may have an acute exacerbation. So that's what makes asthma a little bit tricky. People aren't really textbook cases. Everybody is very unique and everybody's um, experience with his or her own asthma is also very unique. And you had mentioned that there are some people who will develop asthma uh, later in life. I mean, do we do we know why that happens or, or like kind of what all of a sudden just makes it where you have trouble breathing like that? So it's very puzzling. We don't know exactly why it happens, but we, we see it in our clinics. We see people who all of a sudden they were exposed. Usually there's an exposure. There's something that happened, something that they breathed in. Some, they, they got sick. Some, they got sick with some illness that was going around in their family and something about that exposure changes their immune system and they then develop the persistent inflammation that goes on to be asthma. And this happens with a lot of chronic illnesses. You have a genetic predisposition and then something else happens that pushes you over and then you develop that chronic disease. Yeah. So so is there anything that people can, can kind of do to... to manage asthma or, or kind of keep the symptoms from, from returning with a vengeance? I think that you can control the things that are within your realm of control. And then there are certain things outside of your direct control that you can't really do very much about, right? So what, what can you control? You can control your exposures. So if you know you, you have certain allergens, try to limit your exposure to that allergen if you can. If you're allergic to dogs, try to limit your exposure to dogs as much as possible or at least get see an allergy specialist or a pulmonary specialist if you have a pet that you're allergic to. That would be the first thing, avoidance. Um, the second thing would be to, if you have certain medications, if you're prescribed with medications that you have been told to take, take those medications. Um, but outside of avoidance and adherence to medications, there's not too much more that's within your control. Um, other things, though could include, you know, don't, don't smoke cigarettes, don't vape, don't um, smoke marijuana, try to avoid going to 
campfires, you know, if you know that that aggravates you, all of this is avoidance, falls under the umbrella of avoidance. I, I thought I read somewhere too where they said sleeping positions might be able to, to, to help with asthma. So what we know about sleep is that if you sleep on your on your side, it can help keep your airway open. So if you're predisposed to something like sleep apnea, that positioning helps. But I don't think that the sleep positioning itself will help reduce risk of asthma. I think it can help you optimize the good sleep that you're getting if you, you know, sleep in a way that allows you to get good sleep, but it doesn't necessarily help you improve asthma control. Now, so, so just to kind of go over them again, we're looking at avoiding the triggers. Um, what, what are some of the main triggers? You had mentioned pet dander. Um, what are some of the other biggies that, that might kind of set things off for people? So the first one always is pet dander. You know, we have the patient who comes in who has seven cats and she has a cat allergy and she has asthma because of the because of all of the cats. So that's going to be your first major trigger. Other triggers that we see often include dust, dust mites. Um, and this can be triggered even if you wash your sheets, you know, daily, you're cleaning daily, you still can't see dust mites with your eyes. They're microscopic. And so for that reason, we recommend using dust mite covers for your pillow, dust mite covers for your mattresses to try to um, to try to mitigate the exposure to the dust mite. Sometimes when people go to hotels, their allergies and asthma act up a little bit more because you're sleeping in that bed and the bed can have dust mites. Um, and so for those people, I'd recommend trying to take an antihistamine with you if you're, you know, if you're sleeping in a hotel. Those are your most common ones. We also see um, allergens such as pollen, trees, um, the spring allergies, people often call it um, like a ragweed allergy. So th those are also common ones that we see. Those are all the allergic type of triggers. Then you have non-allergic triggers that include um, air pollution, that include perfume, cold weather, exercise. And sometimes someone's asthma is multifactorial, which means they have a little bit of cold triggered, a little bit of um, fragrance triggered, a little bit of allergen triggered. So th those have those people have multifactorial asthma. It sounds like if you have asthma, it, it is it's one of those things that you have to manage your your, your entire life and kind of kind of be cognizant of it and, and make sure that that you're kind of avoiding. The, the, those triggers and, and anything that could kind of make it make it flare up. Yes, it is. And it's it's surprising the ways in which it can affect you. For instance, if you are somebody who wants to scuba dive, you have to consider your asthma in making that decision. Um, scuba diving is going to very, very deep waters and in those depths, you're exposed to a lot of pressure pushing in on your lungs. And if you have asthma, then you are more prone to having a fatal exacerbation. So you have to be checked out by a doctor who has to check your lung function testing, who has to make sure that you're breathing the way you should be breathing before you attempt scuba diving. So that's, that's an aspect that you wouldn't think uh, you'd be affected by, but in fact you are. People who join the military have to be screened for asthma. And that's because if they have an exacerbation while they're engaged in combat, that could be potentially disastrous. So that also um, is something that people don't often think about. So there, there are many ways in which it can affect your life. 
But I think for the most part, if people are, like you said, aware of what their triggers are, if they're smart about the decisions that they make regarding their asthma, they can be pretty controlled. Most people are pretty controlled with their asthma. There, are, There is a small percentage of people who their lives are very affected by their very severe asthma and they are very, very ill. But for the most part, people are able to manage it with or without medications and their and under their doctor's guidance. Well, you've given us a, a fabulous game plan to follow to, to kind of to keep asthma in check. Uh, but so before we kind of say our goodbyes, though, is there anything that we missed or anything else that you'd like to add? I think that asthma is it's an encouraging uh, condition for me to treat because I think that people can get better and we see people get better and have fulfilling lives with minimal symptoms. And I think that's something to be optimistic about and um, something that we should be happy about. Asthma is something that we can take care of and we can manage. And we can't say that about a lot of chronic illnesses. Dr. Solanke, the perfect way to wrap things up. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, look forward to having you back. No problem. Thank you. Asthma is a potentially life-threatening condition that typically doesn't just disappear. And even if the condition does seem like it's gone, there's always a possibility it may return. That's why it's important to make lifestyle choices that can help keep it away. Till next time, be well.